So today we'll be discussing the NIST um, SP800-115 uh, special uh, publication uh, from NIST. Uh, the technical name is Technical Guide to Information Security Testing and Assessment. Um, this is a guideline more than a framework or uh, a methodology for penetration testing. Uh, first of all, let's address who is NIST and what is NIST. Uh, NIST, National Institute uh, for Standard and Technology, which is part of the Department of Commerce in the United States. And under FISMA, which is the Federal Information Security Management Act, they are responsible for developing guidelines and standards for the federal government in the United States. Uh, during the years, they have uh, created wonderful uh, publications, very, very important for the cybersecurity industry. Uh, the most popular one is the 53, uh, which is uh, security controls used uh, in, in many industries. And uh, although it's made and designed for uh, the federal government in the United States, but a lot of private sector use it. Um, and the 61, which is the incident handling one, very, very important, very uh, good uh, quality um, publications. And the cybersecurity framework, the CSF, uh, which is uh, an executive order uh, under Barack Obama administration to create a framework for any organization anywhere to use to protect itself or enhance its cybersecurity posture. Now, going back to uh, the 115, which is one to discuss, uh, it is uh, the guideline that is very simple, very straightforward in doing any uh, security testing and assessment. It's beyond uh, penetration testing understanding for us in the industry. When we go to the planning stage, and then you have the discovery stage, the attack stage, and reporting. So uh, planning, you start the, the planning for any penetration testing you want to to uh, to conduct and you have the reconnaissance the discovery uh, method that you want to do and then you attack so the discovery and the attack are interloop so always you know this discovery you you test that discovery there's a dis uh, this uh, discovery you uh, do the exploitation until there's none and then it goes back to the final reporting and planning which is connected and uh, tying everything together um, in the attack phase, you have gaining access, escalation privileges, um, and installing new tools and going on. So it's as well a process in a process. Um, going into that, with NIST, you have seven main stages um, of separation of what is that uh, special publication or how this special publication is, is made with. You have the security testing examination overview, which have the policies, roles, methodologies, and techniques uh, used or should be used. You have review of these techniques. For example, reviewing of the logs, very important. The IDS, IPS logs, firewall, uh, important servers, way and how these logs are. The rule set review of the, your ACL um, rules in your firewall any sort of configuration you have in your environment has to be assessed and reviewed. Network sniffing, file integrity checking. So it's, you see it's much more diverse and beyond any penetration testing scope as well, some stages. And you have a target identification and analysis technique, um, which is network discovery, porting, vulnerability scans, wireless scans, Bluetooth scans, um, any sort of, of scanning and discovery within your environment is included in this, this section. And then you have the target vulnerability, and this is where we have the penetration testing section under there, because there's the password or, or brute forcing and uh, uh, the triple A framework bypass take place there. Uh, you have the social engineering, which is testing or tricking users to give you their passwords or information they shouldn't, and this is testing the human element in any organization. The weakest link in any penetration testing are humans. Um, that will take part in uh, the target vulnerability validation techniques. And then you have the security assessment planning and goes on with um, how you set your priority, how you develop your assessments um, and the legal aspect of that. If you're engaging a third party to do that assessment, how and who, 
and um, uh, the, the, the rule of engagement takes place there as well. Then you have the security assessment, execution, coordination, analysis, data handling. Uh, the assessor is responsible of handling the data and the findings. Uh, because if these findings fall in the wrong hands, that can be destructive to any organization. So it's the assessor responsibility to protect and deliver these findings safely to the people that should only be um, advised um, on, on these vulnerabilities and no one else. And then you have the post-testing activities, which is the mitigation, right? the recommendations that come after that. And the reporting, the final reporting of all the findings and how uh, the validation and remediation takes place and how it should be conducted and how it should be done. So as you can see, it's a very thorough, um, special uh, publication, um, very informative, and that should be used as a guide to help your strategy and methodology in conducting an assessment. Uh, but it's not a framework as per se. It's a guide to help organization um, do their work and do their job uh, according to federal uh, policy and procedures uh, and that's it in, in our child watches missed thank you